there's so many vulnerabilities for the city of Boston as it relates to our, our waterfront and sea level rise that now we have to start planning and make sure that we can ensure that Boston can continue to thrive. There's several different things that are on the table in terms of whether that's looking at a harbor-wide solution that would really protect not just Boston, but some of our neighboring cities, but then also some more localized solutions. Is this actually based on what you guys are seeing? or are you just buying into it wholeheartedly? Some parts of the city along our waterfront at King Tide, the highest high tide of the year, we're already seeing the harbor come over uh, the top of our protective areas. And so it's something that we're seeing already, but we recognize that as we see these trends in sea level rise on our tide gauge, that we need to be prepared for even more serious consequences in the future. So what historical sites or monuments are most uh, in jeopardy right now? I think some of the ones that people would recognize right away would be Faneuil Hall, where some of the first meetings for the American Revolution took place. By the end of the century, that could be actually getting water on a daily basis at the high tide. We want to make sure that we're looking at the most vulnerable areas of the city of Boston and coming up with what those solutions look like from a feasibility standpoint what they would cost, and then also compare that to what a harbor-wide solution would look like to make sure that we're doing the most cost-effective thing, but also at the same time making sure that we have plans in place to protect some of our most vulnerable mm -hmm. residents. Right now, we're in the process actually of developing what some of those feasibility studies would look like for some of that green infrastructure or gray infrastructure for some of the more localized, severe er severely impacted areas in the near term.